Hi, everybody. I'm Alex Paul, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces. Today, we're going to talk about the uh, Breitling Navit timer. But first, uh, quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Longines uh, Triple Date Moon Phase. And uh, we just did a video on that, so uh, check it out in the archive. It's a very nice watch. So when we talk about the uh, Breitling Navitimer, arguably it is the um, first quote unquote smartwatch because um, it was able to do math. Um, it still is able to do math, actually. It's a beautiful piece even without that function, I mean, obviously the mathematical functions give it a techno uh, look that you could enjoy even if you did not know how to use the mathematics on the watch. But um, it's actually a slide rule, just like this one. Or I shouldn't say just like this one. This one's got uh, multiple scales on it. A slide rule works uh, like algorithms. An algorithm is a fraction represented as a decimal that you can use to do math. In other words, you add algorithms to multiply and subtract and such to divide. And <clears throat> the whole aspect of uh, using representations of numbers instead of the numbers themselves uh, in algorithmic form is actually the basis of the slide rule. So these fractional numbers, in the case of a slide rule, are represented as actual distances. So for a quick uh, explanation, let's just go to uh, one of these scales. So let me go to, say, the... Um, let's look at the D and C scales. That's these two scales right here. You see how it says D and C. So this line right here. Let's look at this line right here, okay? So if we take the C scale and we put, uh, I'm being very, very basic here. If we put one over two, okay, you see how it has uh, one over two right here? If we go all the way across and we look at two, there's a four, get it? Two times two is four. Uh, and they launched the uh, Saturn spacecraft with these things. I mean, obviously not doing two times two is four, more like finding square roots and uh, such and working on uh, thrust vectors and the like, which brings us back to this because um, one of the things you can do with a slide rule is calculate speed, distance, fuel consumption and the like. And that's why this watch has a slide rule. And so the slide rule, um, allowed a pilot to calculate how fast they were going, how much fuel was left, how far they could go in the fuel they had. So let's go in close, uh, switch the camera angle and uh, take a look at this beautiful piece. So here we are with the uh, Breitling Navitimer up close. This is the uh, GMT version, the, the world model. It's got a 24 hour uh, indicator and the red arrow hand points to the time where you are tracking. In this case, I'm uh, tracking California time from here in Germany, as I've got uh, people I call out there. I'm thinking of changing it to uh, Chicago time. It does not have a jumping hour hand like the Explorer or some other uh, GMTs. It's just simple uh, independent setting of the GMT hand, but the uh, hour hand, uh, you'd have to uh, reset the watch to change the regular hour hand. Um, now, <clears throat> one of the things that's important to uh, point out whenever you talk about Breitling is the fact that uh, they came out with the first pusher chronograph in uh, 1923. And um, that was a pusher that did not come through the crown. It had a separate pusher. And then in 1934, um, Willie Breitling actually created the first two button or two pusher chronograph, uh, one to stop and one to start and one to stop the uh, chronograph function, the uh, stopwatch function. So uh, Breitling should be always uh, lauded for those achievements. Now, um, this model, as I said, is the world model. It has the blue dial. And um, 
the very distinctive slide rule bezel. Um, as I had pointed out uh, earlier, the, uh, you know, it's basically just an allegory, uh, you know, straightforward uh, representation of a standard slide rule, except, uh, as I said, in this case, it's also set up for um, nautical miles, miles, uh, standard miles, uh, gallons, and it's basically set up so that you can use it for flight calculations in addition to uh, straight mathematics. In this case, for example, let's say I wanted to do that same um, add and subtract, I mean that same multiply thing, we take the, uh, oops, sorry, we take the 10, see each of the red f numbers is an index, so it allows you to set the various functions and to use them. So here, for example, I set it on um, 8, so now I'm going through the various uh, powers of 8. So in, if you see, you'll notice that it uh, reflects the various um, multiple, multiples of 8. Now, the uh, more uh, sharp-eyed among you will say, well, it doesn't really say exactly what the number is. You have to keep the decimal point in your head. So when it has uh, an answer like uh, 120, you know, 127, uh, it could be 12.7, or it could be uh, 1.27, or it could be 127,000. Uh, you need to have an idea of what units of measure you're looking for uh, when you go in. Um, other than that, it's your traditional chronograph uh, stopwatch function, stop start. Uh, beautiful blue face. This is also available with a black face. Uh, in addition to the regular version and the world version, they also have this, uh, you can get this in a um, perpetual calendar. They no longer make the perpetual calendar, but uh, you can get your hands on one uh, used at a reasonable price. And it's got a really nice moon phase at the uh, three o'clock if you get the Breitling uh, Perpetual Calendar. Now, let's take a quick look at the uh, general measurements. This thing is a huge watch. Um, it's supposed to be, let's see, if we do just by the bezel, it's a 46. And if we um, go by the thickness, it's 15 and a half, roughly. Uh, lug width is 24. So um, it should be pretty easy to find a NATO for this if you wanted. Uh, as far as the back goes, it's a beautiful case. It uh, shows you the time offset for the various cities around the world. So if you set the watch uh, second hand, I mean the second hour hand, the GMT hand, if you set it for GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, you could then do all of the uh, math for all of the various locations just by going by the uh, GMT time that you would uh, put on the watch. It comes with a very nice uh, leather strap. Now in the case of this, this is a replacement strap, but it was replaced by um, a jeweler to get the uh, same uh, match as far as color. The Breitling uh, strap is actually a little bit better than this one, but uh, as I said, this is not the Breitling strap. Um, it is the Breitling buckle, however, because the jeweler just uh, transferred it. But that's one of the nice things about uh, having um, access to a jeweler, because you can do things like uh, get straps replaced and repaired, and uh, watches, of course, uh, repaired as well. So um, that's the Breitling uh, Navitimer. Let's uh, turn around and back out of this and uh, say goodbye. So. Uh, that was the uh, Breitling Navitimer, a beautiful, beautiful watch with a tremendous amount of history and uh, lovely functionality. And you can do math on it. So, I'm Alex Paul. Thanks for taking the time. Have a great day.